The Nissan Pathfinder's multi-generational history in Australia has been an inconsistent one, a journey over which more than 70,000 units have been sold. In the 1990s it was a refined answer to rough and tumble off-road rivals, while in the 2000s it morphed into a utilitarian 4x4 when its enemies had become soft Monaco crossovers. The current iteration bows to established conventions, targeted at the US, where it sells in big numbers, and aimed in Australia at the more popular Toyota Kluger and Mazda CX-9. While never a paragon of style or efficiency, it has leveraged keen pricing and mountains of cabin space well enough, averaging about 5% market share over the past few years. Nissan launched the MY17 updated model a few months ago, bringing a number of changes to the table to compete with the aforementioned rivals in ways beyond the dotted line. Who is Nissan targeting? Families of course, people too style conscious for a people mover minivan, who want ride height and do predominantly urban driving. So what has changed? The MY17 Pathfinder get a revised V6 petrol engine with more power yet greater efficiency, matched to a new CVT gearbox that's supposedly better than its predecessor. There's also a plethora of new partial autonomous active safety technologies from Nissan's Intelligent Mobility Suite, improved infotainment and subtly revised looks with flashy LED headlights available. Given the latest Mazda CX-9 is still a relatively new offering, the Kluger has just copped its own big upgrade, and the soon-to-be-updated diesel Kia Sorento remains a benchmark, the big Nissan has a task ahead. While the range kicks off at $41,990 before on-road costs, here we're testing the flagship TI all-wheel drive. AWD, that costs $66,190, bisecting the cheaper CX-9 Azami and pricier Kluger Grand. It's also $5,000 more than the bigger, roomier and more efficient turbo-diesel Kia Carnival Platinum People Mover with sliding side doors. We reckon shelving your pride and looking in this direction has merit. The Pathfinder's cabin remains a bit of a grab bag. The positives are its new 8.0-inch touchscreen that is crisper and has simpler menus than before, the trio of USB inputs, better Bluetooth software and a reassuring feeling of solidity and quality, mixed with some genuinely tactile leather and plastic surfaces. The heated and ventilated leather seats are like big, plush Lazy Boy recliners as well, not the most supportive, but by God, they're comfortable. There's also a great 13-speaker Bose audio system with acoustic waveguide tech, and an electric adjustable steering column that adjusts rake and reach. Negatives, the fascia is still button-heavy, the interface remains less intuitive than rivals, there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it lacks the Kluger's multitude of clever storage nooks, and that foot-operated parking brake remains. Being the range topper, the $70 K-ish Pathy TI brings a long list of standard equipment, 3-zone climate control, leather seats, keyless go, front sunroof and panoramic glass roof, satellite navigation, 360-degree camera, LED headlights, remote engine start, and auto tilt downside mirrors to stop you curb rashing those nice alloy wheels when parallel parking. There's also a host of new tech such as Autonomous Emergency Braking AEB, Blind Spot Monitoring, Rear Cross Traffic Alert built into the AEB and Adaptive Cruise Control that mirrors the speed of a car ahead, best for highway driving. This complements the six airbags and 2013 five-star ANCAP crash rating. The area where the Pathfinder is truly distinguished is cabin space. This beast is more than 5 meters long and is a proper 3-row, 7-seater rather than a 5 plus 2 like a Hyundai Santa Fe or Skoda Kodiak. The middle row seats slide and recline, there are suffix anchors, the large portion of the 60-40 split is on the left-hand side for those affixing permanent child seats, 
Though you can tilt and slide the right side and the Sofix compatible child seat in place to maintain third row access, big side windows, LED reading lights, and a flat floor. The seats are quite flat and unsupportive, but you cannot argue with the space. There's also a screen embedded in each front seat headrest that plays DVDs, USBs, HMDI and ON. Nissan's other party trick is the easy flex seating system in which the middle seats shrug pull a lever and the base rises, the chair slides on rails, and the backrest tilts downwards in one simple movement. Access to the third row is therefore well ahead of anything this side of a Kia Carnival or Honda Odyssey, and the third row seating also includes recline adjustment and comes with a rear tether point for a child restraint. Headroom and legroom is decent, though tow room is limited. An electric tailgate with motion sensor liberates a large storage area that offers as much as 2260 liters of space with the middle and back row of seats folded flat. Then are a total of 10 cup holders, 6 bottle holders, 4 12V outlets and an underfloor storage compartment below seats 6 and 7. In short, the interior still feels a little old head in terms of design, but it's loaded with features and the practicality aspect remains inarguable. How does it drive though? The big change is the 3.5-liter V6 engine, which Nissan claims uses 50% new parts. It's now got 202 kilowatts of power, up 12 kilowatts, and 340 newton meters of torque up 15 newton meters and uses a claim 10.1 l/100 kilometers of 91 Romanian lay petrol. It also tows 2700 kilograms if required. It's a free revving and characterful unit in Nissan's fine tradition and though it lacks the pulling power or frugality of the Kia Sorento's diesel, it about matches the Kluger's 3.5 V6 unit and the CX-9's turbocharged 2.5-liter 4-pot. We managed fuel consumption of 11.5 L-100 km, which is actually okay for a car this big, though if you hoof it, you'll see that climb to 14 L-100 km or more, which won't help household fuel bills much. Slow and steady, guys. On a side note, you can get a 188 kilowatts per 330 newton meters petrol electric hybrid version for $3,000 more, which matches a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine with a 15 kilowatts electric motor and 144V lithium-ion battery to cut fuel use to 8.8 L/100 kilometers. The new CVT gearbox is better than the old unit because while it remains an infinite ratio unit, Nissan has added in vogue simulated step ratios, so it feels like a regular auto under heavy throttle. This helps noise suppression. Under the body Nissan has firmed up the suspension a little, which in turn slightly improves the body control handling. The old pathy rolled in corners like a flat barge in a storm whereas this one is more like one of those modern ferries. Still not as dynamic as the Mazda, of course. The positive trade-off here is that, despite the 18-inch wheels and firmer damping, the Nissan still irons out sharp hits pretty well, ensuring decent road comfort, albeit still a tiny bit behind the super plush Kluger. The steering is a little quicker from center but it remains a little on the heavy and cumbersome side, with about three turns lock to lock. Despite the high driving position and large windows, this big Nissan feels every millimeter of its 5.1M dimensions. Happy in shopping center car parks and modern estates sure, less so in the inner city with its tight parks and narrow gaps. Our tester had an on-demand all-wheel drive system that shuffles torque rearwards when slip is detected up front, and bundles in a hill descent control in a low speed lock mode. Don't mistake this for a proper 4x4, but it'll navigate small trails or snowy roads. If you want real capability opt for a Ford Everest or Toyota Prado. 
from an ownership perspective, all Pathfinder model grades included a 3-year slash 100,000 km warranty and 24-hour roadside assistance program. Scheduled servicing for the 2017 Pathfinder is required every 10,000 km slash 12 months, whichever occurs first. The approximate prices for each of the first three services are $281, $383 and $281. Reasonable. All told the updated Pathy is clearly a better bid than before, though it still lacks the CX-9's or Kluger's polish. We think it's actually a stronger option at $42 K Street guys where its dollar for space equation is inarguably great. If the TI is more your bag, haggle for a deal.